like to know from all of you what especially fascinates you about the topic cybersecurity and especially about the world, the cyber world. Um, Marie, can you start? Yes, um, thank you for inviting me and hello to everyone. Um, I think the cyber world is in construction and this is what is fascinating because we have to contribute to the security of this world and there is a lot to do. So I, I like contributing to securing the, the cyber world. So Shira, how about you? Oh, what fascinates uh, me is that, uh, you know, when I started uh, cybersecurity, so I started my business about uh, seven, eight years ago, uh, after serving in the intelligence, um, in the military intelligence 20 years ago in Israel, uh, I was pretty much alone in the room talking about cybersecurity. Everybody looked at me and said, hey, what are you talking about? There's like IT security, there's IT, but what are you talking about? Uh, and the room usually was full of men. Uh, and uh, seven years, eight years uh, fast forward, and we're here in Bern, and the room is full of women, and everybody uh, is talking about cybersecurity, and it's up in the main uh, headlines, uh, and everybody knows about it uh, because the threat is real, uh, and the hackers are, are working, and they're not sleeping like we are, or not taking ski holidays like we are. <laughs> Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's really in everybody's domain. And this transition is just exciting. Uh, it's a growth market. Uh, you mentioned the numbers. Uh, it's growing. Uh, the global cost of uh, cybercrime is growing to the trillions. And there's going to be a lot of work uh, to do there. Uh, so um, my favorite quote from uh, a Russian cyber entrepreneur, Eugene Kaspersky, uh, who spoke in Tel Aviv uh, when I just wrote my thesis on cybersecurity 10 years ago, he said, if you want to have a job for the next 50 years, go into cybersecurity. Okay, so, maybe I should change my job. But um, <laughs> <laughs> So, Corina, how about you? What fascinates you uh, about the topic cybersecurity and cyber in general? Well, I am a software developer, so I am writing the software and whenever you touch uh, digital stuff, like you have a, a mobile phone or something, you're in the cyberspace, so you need protection. And we as a developer or engineer, we need to be aware of the threats and we need to cover them. Thank you. Protect yeah. the customers. Yeah. So you are all founders. And um, actually, I would like to know from you first, Shira, did you always know that you want to be an entrepreneur, first of all? And did you always know that you want to work in the technolog technological field? So, uh, how many of you in the room are entrepreneurs? Okay, so about a handful. I don't know what is your entrepreneurial story, but uh, many entrepreneurs uh, are forced to become entrepreneurs because they just don't fit into the corporate world. <laughs> and this is what happened to me. I tried to be a corporate animal, but instead of every year being promoted, every year I went down and then I said at some point, no, <laughs> it's just not for me. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was, it's a true story. I was working in a Swiss bank and uh, it, it was, and I had my first child. Uh, I have three children, by the way, you didn't mention it. This is the most, the most time consuming part of my, of my bio. Uh, they're nine, seven, and four years old. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, I, I was almost forced to be an entrepreneur, and I can tell you about it later over coffee if you want to hear. Uh, but um, I, I got some money from, from the bank and, and started, and, um, and, and the opportunity was quite interesting at the time because I was, in, um, I was doing my MBA in St. Gallen, um, and I wrote a thesis about uh, Swiss uh, venture investments into Israeli cybersecurity. So the time, uh, so I had the time to also research uh, and to interview a lot uh, of, of people on this topic. Um, and I kind of, you know, found my way into this journey. So I had no clue I was going to become an entrepreneur. Okay. So uh, actually, it just happened. Look, you have to have a lot of luck, uh, or sometimes you feel it's unlucky, but you know, one door closes and another one opens, and you're led into a certain journey. Um, so I was, I was unlucky, but then lucky. 
Uh, okay. Yeah. So, but uh, um, Corina, what about you? I mean, did you have a plan? Or how does that happen that you're an entrepreneur? Well, uh, it was actually uh, not planned at all. <laughs> I first wanted to, like, my goal when I was a kid was to help people. So I went uh, straight away towards medicine, social work, like a 16-year-old would go. But then life happened, and I had to do something else. And I started an apprenticeship as a software developer and uh, met my founder, who some years later, after I got, got to work and uh, developed software, he asked me, hey, do you remember I had this ID? Would you like to be my CEO? And well, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Uh, <laughs> If you don't try, you already failed. So, so I said, yes, I would love to do it. I didn't know what it means back then. So just two years that the company is founded. But um, it's actually really nice because whatever you do, it has impact. And you're, you're shaping a new company, a new software, where you can actually help people. And that's the goal, and that's the way. That's very nice. And Marie? So did you always know that you wanted to work in a technological field? I mean, what, what was your first job, actually? Maybe you can also tell yes, us. I have a, a finance background. Uh, I didn't know that I would one day create my own company, but probably it was hidden somewhere. So I, my first, when I looked for my uh, first job, I wanted to work in a small company because I wanted to have a global view on the business. I, I wanted to have impact as well. Uh, and then I work, I joined a bigger, a larger company and then a much larger company. It was Airbus Group. Uh, and then I had enough with large company and uh, I decided to, to leave uh, Airbus Group. And I decided I did I didn't want to work again in a large company. I decided to op to create my own company and to advise um, man top managers, uh, executives, and non-executive di directors uh, about governance and cybersecurity because very often they don't know they they know nothing about cybersecurity. They don't understand. They think it's not for them. So if someone now is here sitting and thinks, oh, I would like to found a company, what are your recommendations? I would, say, I would say be very determined because it's not so easy. And also I think it's good to work in other companies because before creating the, its own company because you learn. You learn uh, what you should not do, <laughs> and 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 you are able then with the experience to succeed. And Chia, what would you say? What type of person does someone has to be to be a good entrepreneur? I I don't want to comment on good entrepreneurs because I'm not even sure I'm a good entrepreneur. Uh, uh, but I I think one thing that. Uh, just back to your previous question on on kind of how to start, mm -hmm. uh, and this was my biggest I don't my biggest intuition. So I I started as I said about eight years ago, and I kind of felt that what I needed the most was a, a partner who was actually much more senior than myself. I was very intimidated by the Swiss market. Uh, excuse the men in the room, but it was a gray haired economy, and I was a redhead uh, young uh, young lady. And I figured I couldn't, there's no way I could do this by myself. Um, and um, so what I did was I was, uh, <laughs> I was shopping around. I was walking with a printed PowerPoint presentation and looking for a chairman or a chairwoman. Um, and um, it was kind of my intuition to say that, you know, if I have somebody more senior, let's say like, like with, with more experience, like a board member type of thing, it would be much easier to open the doors um, and to actually start selling to, to customers. Um, and, um, and that proved to be actually a very good uh, decision. I shopped around. There were two final candidates. Uh, one was a gray-haired man, uh, and another one was uh, an Israeli-Swiss woman who was 25 years older than myself. And we started actually the journey together with with this lady, um, and it was it, it was a pretty good it was a pretty good choice. So, 
Bottom line, if you do start an entrepreneurial journey, you may want to have some kind of a shortcut into uh, the market, because this market is very difficult to sell into. I don't know if, if you've tried, but it's not so easy. But actually, what do I have to study? Is there, I mean, now I always thought that I have to study classical computer science, or, or is it, I mean, am I wrong again? So what do I have to study if I want to be like you, for example? Look, I, you'd be surprised. I'm, I'm not a techie. I'm not a hacker. I'm not a software developer. My training was in the intelligence, so not even cybersecurity, but mm -hmm. I understand people and I understand business. Uh, you can get to an entrepreneurial journey from whichever direction you want. Okay, you can study. I studied political sciences. You can study computer sciences. You can study math. You can study physics. You can study whatever. You, want. you can study arts. It doesn't really matter if uh, if you have a certain uh, direction. Uh, uh, it's good to have. What is very important um, as an entrepreneur, and maybe it would be interesting us to hear your thoughts, is that your um, story, your personal story, aligns with your business. So if, if I start a conversation saying, uh, I served in the military intelligence, it's, it's, it gives credibility. So you need some kind of credibility as an entrepreneur. So the story has to match. Uh, what you do. Yes, I concur totally. Um, like for my, my business, uh, I did an apprenticeship. I didn't study, maybe um, that's important. Um, and my software is about apprenticeships, about digitalizing apprenticeships and about um, automizing processes, not remove the people from that, but to support them that they have more time to um, help young, the young talents uh, to form their future. And that's what my software is about, what my company is about, and what, what um, my heart is um, pulsating for, to help people um, make their daily life easier. So I didn't study, I maybe miss some, some uh, information from the university, but I'm actually studying every day because we're in the IT, mm -hmm. and IT is fast growing and fast changing. So we have to study our entire life if we decide to be in the IT. That's very impressive. Thank you very much. Um, so, I mean, we are at an event called Women in Cyber. So maybe we also could uh, talk a little bit about um, the women in the cyber world. And Marie, I would uh, like to uh, know from you, I mean, we heard that women are underrepresented in the cyber world, 14% in Switzerland, it's not a lot. Um, what are the reasons for the underrepresentation of women in Switzerland, in, the, in this world? Uh, I would say um, IT and cybersecurity are uh, seen as very technical fields. Uh, and, um, and so it's seen as uh, an, a domain where uh, you should be an engineer to, to succeed and to, uh, to, to, be, uh, to be competent. And, and there are not many uh, engineers, women engineers. So I think it, this is the main reason. And then as it is technical, uh, the culture of our countries uh, is that uh, when it's technical, it's, there are more men able to deal with techniques than women able to deal with techniques. It's like that. So I think it is improving uh, but it is a matter of education, of telling our daughters you are able to deal with techniques uh, as your brother or your father. And so it's really a matter of education because we are able to understand technology, we are able to deal with technology. It's really a matter of uh, culture for me. Shira, what do you think? What is the reason for the underrepresentation? I think there's a lot of fear among ladies uh, still. Uh, so if they hear it's something something technical, I mean, they're kind of they shy away. I think we tend to shy away uh, where men kind of feel more confident. Um, you know, my, my nine-year-old daughter uh, plays and builds Lego uh, probably better than a lot of other boys. 
Um, and um, one thing that I do a lot with her and very naturally is talk to her about cybersecurity, which we can call also as digital security, right? It's just the security in the digital world, much like our parents used to talk to, talk to us about security in the physical world, right? Close the door, close the window. It's the same thing, but in the digital world. And so the conversation in our house about cybersecurity is very, very natural. And so maybe playing Lego, building Lego, and talking about cybersecurity will not make her uh, uh, fear this topic. It's very clear. I mean, she's already thinking about hacking and, uh, you know. So, uh, I, 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 you know, I think th this room actually, to me, is, is the proof that we, we should not be worried about anything because it's happening. Should be careful at home with her daughter, maybe. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> Corina, what do you think, what are the reasons, what are the reasons, especially in Switzerland, why we are underrepresented in this world? Well, first of all, we lack technicians and uh, people working in the IT in general, not only females, but uh, men as well. So there are plenty of opportunities for jobs for young women and men as well. And I don't know, actually, I mean, um, we need to have more awareness that there are jobs like that and what the jobs are, uh, what are you doing in those jobs. Okay, so what would, would be also interesting to know, maybe Marie, you can answer this question. Um, do you think that women already now, uh, still now and, and uh, maybe um, uh, well, uh, 20 years ago, that women have to work harder than men uh, in this world to be accepted? Or how is it today and if you can compare from your experience? Yes, I would say yes. Uh, women have to work harder than men uh, in all worlds, in cyber world, world, but in all businesses, it's true. Uh, and so, and the other difficulty or issue is that we have several lives. We, we have to be a good mother, a good wife, and a good professional. It's a lot. And so for me, the, the problem of women is at home. If we, we, you can share uh, the family work, I would say family work, with your uh, husband, it's uh, much better because you, you, can, you, you are free or you have more time and you can concentrate, focus on your work. And this is how men succeed, because they have more time. Uh, and uh, I, I realized that really when my two children were uh, joined a boarding, boarding school and my husband was traveling a lot, and I was free to, uh, to decide to go tomorrow to Toulouse, to Munich, to London, uh, and I can dedicate myself to my work, and it was great. Uh, and, uh, and this is the, the reality for me. And it is progressing. So to answer also your uh, second question, it is progressing. I think men are ready to share the family life more now than 20 years ago. And I hope it will still uh, progress because we are not at the same, it's not yet balanced. Um, and but you also work with French companies, right, and Swiss companies. And do you see any difference between France and Switzerland? Yes, I think that Switzerland is uh, late compared to France. Uh, and but also we we have in Switzerland uh, there is a lack of infrastructures for uh, for children. Uh, children when when they are small, when they are uh, at school there is a lack of infrastructure. So this is really um, an asset uh, when French people have, or French women have. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, Shira, you also work not only in Switzerland, but also in Israel. And uh, do you, s or what is your experience um, between, difference between Switzerland, Israel? Can you tell us a bit more about the differences and the reasons. Yeah, so uh, how many of you have some background to so former Soviet countries like Eastern Europe, Russia? I mean, uh, so 
our, our country, so Israel is, is very much uh, based on, on this type of uh, Eastern European culture where women, uh, in fact, were, were equal, right? It was, let's admit it, it was the communist regime that said that everybody is, is uh, going to work. Uh, and, and Israel is very much based on that, and so uh, you would uh, find uh, women, top career women, with three, four, five children. Uh, that's that's and, and it's a no-brainer. I mean, it's it's this is how usually our. I mean, I have three children. That's kind of like the the minimum <laughs> in my country. <laughs> So it's uh, you know it's 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 taken for granted and women are expected to work and they have very demanding career and I think it really comes from this more uh, I think Soviet mentality to be honest uh, whereas here I I do agree uh, with Marie it's uh, um, it's 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 challenging I mean if the children have to come back from the public school at between twelve and one thirty to have lunch with Mama. Uh, mama cannot really work, but Mama needs to be on Microsoft Teams selling to a customer. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it, I, I agree with you, there's a systematic problem here. Um, you know, I, I, I think it will, it will change over time, and I think expats and, and immigrants, skilled immigrants like, uh, I mean, how many here are not uh, coming originally from Switzerland, but kind of landed here? Yeah, so it's almost a third or half of the room. 50 so I, I think we will we will change it, but it will take time. Switzerland takes time, and just don't <laughs> rush. Just you know, make make babies, have a career, be an inter. Just don't be afraid of anything. That's the most important thing. And find the right partner. I agree with you. Find the right. That's by far the most important thing you will ever make in your life. The most important decision. Okay, so. We need a uh, forward-thinking partner, but I mean, which countries are also forward-thinking? Are there any countries that would all of you would say are really, really forward-thinking? I mean, Israel, yes, and US, yes, no. I would say so. The big concerns they have a lot of um, women. They're trying at least. So, so other countries like Israel and also the US have a lot of um, women in the cybersecurity. Is that right? Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, half of the you know the, the mm -hmm. army where I served for two years from the ages of eighteen to twenty. I mean, it's it's half men, half women. There's no, there's just no, uh, and the intelligence and the cybersecurity units. I mean, are pretty much pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. I would uh, now uh, move on a little bit more um, to the topic that how we get more women into the cyber world. I mean, all the women here, they're already interested. That's already good, but we need others. And maybe next year, uh, I hope we have a, a bigger room that we have uh, the double of it uh, fr from here now. Um, Corina, what advice would you give young, also, would you give to young women who are not sure whether the job in the new technologies like AI, metaverse, and so on, is the, the right choice for them? Well, they could simply start using the AI to ask what the buzzwords mean. <laughs> so there are plenty of tools like large language models, naming one ChatGPT, uh, where you should not put sensitive data into. But you can still ask, hey, what does AI mean? What are the fields? Where? Uh, which topic um, you're uh, interest of, and then you can go deeper into the details, and then you can ask, hey, what kind of jobs are possible, which companies are offering them, and as well, if you want to talk with a human, you can go to companies that are serving like uh, uh, girls in cyber or girls in IT days, like uh, to name one company as a partner company of me as Thai International, uh, they're working with apprentices, and I think as well, I've seen a banner outside of Spark, the Swiss military um, program where young women and men can start into the world of cyber, like um, they're offering a course, but I think we're hearing something more later about them. Can I also apply to, you, to your company or? Uh, so. we're, we're a really um, a small startup, but if you want to get in touch with me and with, with my company, I'm working together with Thai International. We have a, 
uh, co-working. So I am not yet able to have my own apprentices, but I'm making apprentice software. So I want to be close to the customers and the customers are as well like apprentices. So um, I am um, hiring apprentices from Thai International to work together with my software. So when they have to write a working journal, they can be sure that an apprentice was, was there for the design, what they, they want, to, um, want to do. So if you want uh, to make an apprenticeship in IT, um, go to Thai International. <laughs> okay, very good advice. So um, also, Maria, I would like to know from you, um, how can women be motivated to work in the field of IT security? And, and in general in the IT world. So how can they be motivated, in your opinion? So I would say, um, again, education is very important to open the eyes of uh, your daughters, our daughters, and to say it's also for you. I would say it's also a, a political topic because everything is digital now. Uh, all businesses are digital, or all things are digital. And if the world, the digital world, is built only by men, we are going back to, uh, the, to the 19th century or uh, even uh, before. So I think it's, yes, really a political topic. Uh, so we should have women, a balanced number of women and men in this IT world, because we, the conception of tools, the IA, the, the, the ethic way of working in the, this digital world, it has to be also shaped by, by women. It's very important. Shira, you are very committed to getting more women into the cyber world and that they are very, very interested um, in technical professions. Um, what is, what is, why is that so important for you? And can you tell us a little bit more what you do that you get more women into the cyber world? Well, I mean, why, you know, that's a the, the, the biggest the biggest fear of my daughter so my daughter she's already thinking like uh, like a, an investor and you know whenever we have a new startup she says mama you have to put more money in this company because they're going to be big and, and her biggest fear uh, already at the age of 9 is that robots are going to to take over um, and I, you know obviously there's all the mckinsey all the mckinsey reports and, and ai taking I, I think she's actually right. So I think we're, we're not very far from the moment where, where really most of the services around us, the phone calls we make, I mean, we're going to be talking to, to bots, to robots. Um, I think the human element um, then becomes all the more important, right? I mean, we need to have quality people uh, doing uh, thinking, you know, about uh, the world that is going, I mean, the world in 10 years will look very different than what it is today. And we need to have uh, very, very strong minded people um, making the right decisions. Uh, so obviously I like to attract the right talent, uh, uh, you know, young women to think about it and, and to help us shape the next generations, because it, it is kind of scary, actually. We, we are, we, we, you kind of feel the, the, feel the, the tipping point. Um, uh, so that's kind of why I'm interested. And then uh, what I do uh, very often is, um, and especially through my army unit, the alumni network of the women, is I do a lot of mentorship uh, for younger women. And I was uh, myself very lucky to be mentored by my uh, former uh, business partner, that lady that I told you about. Um, and so I think mentorship and the passing of knowledge, and not just on cybersecurity, but also on business, um, there's mentorship that is very important. There's also reverse mentorship. Reverse mentorship is when you learn from the younger generation. Uh, so reverse mentorship is what I would experience with, with my daughter or my business partner used to experience with me when I taught her a lot of things. So these two things, I think, are, are very beneficial. 
Yes, just I would like to add something. I, I think that also we have to explain that IT is technical, cybersecurity is technical, but there are many competencies needed in this uh, digital world. It, it is uh, legal, it is compliance, it is risk management, it is audit. Uh, it, th there are many competencies that can uh, bring something, bring value to this uh, world. So it's not only uh, being an engineer, and of course we have to understand what it means IT, what it means cyber security, but it's not only technical. So that's very nice. I guess we have maybe some questions, but before we start the questions uh, from the audience, I will also would like to know from you um, at the end, if you could give one advice to a career starter, one advice to someone who wants to start the career in the cyber world, what advice would that be and why? Corina. Well, try it out. <laughs> and why? Because if you don't try it out, you already failed. And you can just benefit from it. Even if you decide to not work into the cyber industry at all, whatever you learn here is useful everywhere. Since every one of you has a smartphone or a smart device, a smart TV, a smart um, vacuum hoover. So you're in touch with it, even if you think you're not. So your advice is also that, I mean, um, try it out and it doesn't matter if you fail. Would um, you say that too? Exactly, because you already failed if you don't try. Good. Shira, what is your advice and why? Uh, um, maybe not everybody will appreciate this, but I'm a big fan actually of, of military service and especially in these fields of, of cybersecurity. And, and the reason is... Uh, and this is why the Israeli ecosystem is very is really thriving on cyber. Is it? I call it. It's it's hands-on cybersecurity. It's real cybersecurity. It's not theoretical. It's not academic. Um, uh, we, you know, our military defends critical infrastructure. It it defend. It, it, it's a kind of a, uh, we're protecting from the hackers because if we don't do that, I mean, uh, you know. Everything will, you know, we're surrounded by, by real enemies, unfortunately. So my, my, uh, my advice is, is to try to go, whether it's the military or not, but try to go to a place where you can do real cybersecurity, kind of, uh, you know, put your sleeves up and, and, and not just study it kind of only theoretically, because in the end, um, yeah, I think we need, we need uh, expertise uh, that is what, what we call hands-on. Uh, so this would be my take on it. I would say there, uh, first, first word, and then I would say there, there are a lot of diverse competencies needed in uh, the cyber world and in cyber security. And uh, there are many IT people which are the, who are not competent <laughs> in, in security. Uh, even in IT, there are many IT teams who are not competent. So it's it's about cybersecurity is about uh, methodology, analytics, uh, being uh, follow rules, create rules, innovate, uh, think globally uh, from uh, from uh, to the whole uh, ecosystem. Uh, so uh, supply chain services provider, IT services provider, data. There, there, there are a lot, a lot, there is a lot to do and there is, uh, yes. I, I think one day cybersecurity will, will be integrated really in IT. So maybe in 10 years, maybe soon earlier, maybe later, I don't know. But I think we will not talk so much about cybersecurity in a few years. We will, we will integrate cybersecurity into IT and IT will be secured. But we have a lot to do until uh, this uh, step. So there are a lot of interesting jobs for women and for you as well. And now 
it's open if you have question questions to uh, the ladies who has a question and want to ask something yes thanks um so since since we're talking about startups i remember that once i took some startup boot camp and we had many lectures like yourselves and i remember that every single one of them said that the startup they're leading right now is not the first thing they started and they had many failures behind themselves so my question for you is did you have any failures be before you started something that actually uh, was successful and did you learn anything from them it's a very good question maybe i mean if, if i may uh, i think what is I want to take kind of zoom out a little bit from your question. It's a very good question. Uh, but the culture of, of failure is very important. Uh, if you look at America, if you look at Israel, it's a culture of failure. It's not a culture of success. You fail, you fail again, you fail again, and then you make it. And I think from my understanding, I've only been here for 13 years, so maybe it's not long enough. Um, but there is no culture of failure. If you fail, you're out. Uh, and you're disrespected. Uh, I think this is, uh, it's a very, very important uh, point to, to, to bring this culture of failure here. Um, I personally had uh, many, many, many failures in my career, maybe not as an entrepreneur, uh, but many points where I didn't get into the business school that I wanted, or I got... Uh, uh, my team was restructured in the bank, as I said, and I had to leave. I mean, there's so many failures, but failure is so incredibly important. Um, and uh, and I, I think this is part of what we should bring to this, to this culture. Is It's totally fine. It's great to fail. You know the quote of Nelson Mandela, I never lose. Either I win or I learn. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, um, it's a good summary. Mm -hmm. Corinna, do you have something to add to this question? No, I totally concur with uh, those brilliant women. <laughs> so, who has a question? Yeah, two questions. Um, I don't remember who told it. Uh, was mentioned that the digital society where we live, if we don't have enough women that uh, uh, contribute to it, we have a problem. Then just a provocative thought that popped in my mind, in the Industrial Revolution, there were not women that created it. It was a problem. <laughs> I think it's different. The industry is the industry. It's uh, only some businesses, uh, some businesses, digital, uh, concern everybody, everything in the in the society now. So it's different. You cannot live without a smartphone. You cannot live uh, with uh, without a computer. You cannot work without a computer. So, so it's really a new world. So, so it, it, you need to have uh, diversity in this world, gender diversity, I mean. So there was another question. Uh, yes, uh, thanks for the interesting panel, first of all, and the insights you shared. Um, maybe a question to you, Marie, because you work together with a lot of board members. Is the topic of cybersecurity a topic that has risen due to the hype topic of ESG often? Or is it because board members really understand the threat it poses to the companies? So, um, so, the, the, so if I have well understood the question, is, is, is it a copy topic for board members? Huh? Yeah, if it's a topic for board members yes. due to ESG or because oh, they really due understand to ESG. No, 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 no. behind it. No, I think ESG and, and cybersecurity are not considered as common topics. It's parallel topics. Unfortunately, because I think that the sustainability of the company depends on the cyber performance. So I, I think it should be also a pillar of ESG. Uh, for maybe a fourth, we should have a C 
C-E-S-G. <laughs> or E-S-G-C, I don't know. Um, and uh, and I, I can say that it is very difficult to bring this topic at the executive committee and, uh, uh, and board level because they all uh, think that it is a technical issue and that if they have a good CISO, if they have a good uh, IT experts or a good IT uh, services provider, it's enough. But it's, it's not enough. It's maybe one third of the issue. And the other uh, third is training of all, uh, all uh, employees. And uh, the other one is governance, rules, risk management, uh, etc. And techniques, technical, uh, so experts can bring their value, but they cannot, they don't have the authority to decide the strategy, to assess the risk, to uh, bring solutions. And then at the end, it's, they are responsible if something happens. And uh, they have to be supported by the, um, by the executive committee, the direction, and by the board. And they have, and to be supported, uh, these people, uh, these top managers, they have to understand the topic, and they have to decide what to do, and to allocate uh, financial means. And if they don't know what priority, uh, to, if they, they are not able to decide what is a priority, they cannot protect their business properly. So it's very important, but it's, it is progressing, but it's very long, very, very long. Okay, thank you very much. We have time for just one last question. It's not a question, more a thought. Um, I'm probably the least technical person in the room here because I have a marketing background. Um, so I look at all of this from a marketing perspective. Um, and... Are we doing ourselves a service or a disservice in even positioning ourselves as we do to the men? Like the look and feel is, you know, quite masculine. So do we even have to think about how we position ourselves to other women to attract women into the industry? It's just a thought. Um, maybe you have some initial mm -hmm. responses. So are, are you saying that, that the women in cyber positioning is, is, is doing disservice? Is this one? As women, we're attracted by maybe different visuals, different language, different tone of voice, um, and, you know, different graphics maybe. Sort of are we being too male-led even in the way that we appear visually and in the language that we're using, um, you know, do we even have to think about like products specifically for women? You know, as a consumer, do I understand, um, you know, the products that I need to protect myself? And am I then attracted by those products to even consider working in the cybersecurity space? So it's just something that I've been thinking about for the last few weeks. Um, I don't have the answer, but I thought I'd just throw it out there for us to think about as a community of women working in this industry. If you don't have an answer, there's someone else who has an answer. Interesting <laughs> thought, very interesting. You might not be the least technical person in this room. <laughs> Actually, no, I have become a bit more technical, but I think it's a really valid point, and I think it might be more related to the fact that cybersecurity is really very much so far been looked at as a very technical subject, but as Marie has said, it's not. Mm -hmm. At least in, in, in your description, two-thirds were non-technical, right? Yes. And I think that might be the issue because a lot of women are, I don't know, psychologists, marketing, marketeers, uh, communications people, uh, lawyers, whatnot, right? And they just need to understand that, you know, cybersecurity is not so technical as it is perceived. And I think that might be where we might have to change the marketing and the job descriptions. I think that was a very good closing word for the panel discussion now. And I would like to thank you for the very interesting discussion. And uh, I think we will move on to the next presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.